coming out of the Word of God, I want us to open to Isaiah today. Isaiah chapter 55. I want to read from verse 10 and 11. Or we want to focus on 11, really. So verse Isaiah 55, verse 11. Father, we thank you for the Word of God this morning. Lord, into our hearing, we ask, O oh God, that you would permeate uh, the truth of revelation and understanding of the Word of God into our very hearts. That, Lord, that we may rise from this place today uh, to be ambassadors of the Word of God. That that Word would be sharp within us. It would be truth laid upon us. Uh, that, God, that we may be able to yield that truth, Father, to a world that needs to know our Saviour, Jesus Christ. So, God, as we commit the Word into our hearts, we pray that we wouldn't just hear the Word, but that we would rise up and do it as well, and we give you praise and glory in Jesus' uh, wonderful name. Amen. You know, I, I want to speak about what I, I feel today uh, for this service, about the power of the spoken Word. I want to talk about words this morning. I want to talk about the power of spoken words. You know, some words are so damaging, it's incredible. Sometimes we speak to ourselves in such a negative way that we undo everything that God wants to do in our life. At times, the words that we speak in silent to our own lives develops what we call a, uh, an inadequacy within our framework, within our life, so that we don't rise up with confidence to be the very special, unique, designed woman or man of God that God intended us to be. See, because as God uses His Word to open up people to bring life to, the enemy, the devil, uses words of destruction to undo everything God wants to do in the world. See, that's the very distinct problem in, in, at the start of humanity. When God, when God said to, uh, to Eve in the garden, you shall not partake of the tree of the fruit of good and evil. And the Bible says that once God's presence went away from Eve, the devil began to start to sow seeds of what we call doubt. He started to speak to Eve these words. Did God really say that? Did God really say that? And she started to begin to question in her heart the very word of God to her life. And as soon as she began to question the word of God, what had begun to start to happen was a seed of doubt and unbelief begin to start to resonate within her spirit and she begin to start to act upon that word. See, words are very powerful. Words are very important for the Christian believer. For you to have success as a Christian, you are going to have to understand the power of spoken words. Oh, it's okay to think it. It's okay to, to dwell on the, on the imaginary uh, aspects of it because the Bible says it's not what goes into a man that defiles him, but it's what comes out of a man that, that sets him up, that defiles him. So I want to talk about not what you think. I want to talk about what you speak today, the spoken words of God. See, the word of God spoken in faith in the name of Jesus has awesome power to overcome insurmountable circumstances and obstacles. The Bible is littered with testimonies of men of God who spoke the word over their circumstances, over their situations, and saw great miracles flourish because they believed the word of God to be true other than their understanding and their circumstances. See, the power of the Christian authority over the works of the devil needs to be declared so victories can be produced in our Christian life. 
It's no use receiving a victory and then going hiding somewhere or lying somewhere and not testifying of what God has done in our lives. As soon as we begin to testify, as as soon as we begin to speak the word of God out into our community, what ends up happening is we trigger a supernatural response of God into an immaterial, natural world. See, the world around us is fake. The world of God is real. And when we bring the world of God into our circumstances, supernatural aspects of God's work and God's life begin to create the world in which we live. A world of expectation. A world of great faith. A world understanding that God is going to do amazing things on our behalf. See, victories and great wonders are available to the men and women of God. They're available at the hands of a believer. When you believe something and you speak it out as truth, it formulates into an answer and then it brings about a wonder and brings God higher into every given situation. Come on, we need to believe God. We are the only instruments on the planet that believe God can do wondrous things on our behalf. That's the Christian. That's the believer. My mouth shall be filled with the wondrous word and the truth of God to create a world in which I live. Come on, this is what the Word of God says in Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11. It says this, So my words that go out from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty or be void, but will accomplish that to which I desire and achieve the purposes for which I sent the Word of God to do. Come on, church. When you speak the word of God into your situation, you're creating an opportunity for that word's power to take effect in your circumstances. Come on, when you see it. I want to talk the first point this morning for you is this, is that the spoken word of God is a doorway to answered supernatural outcomes. Come on, the word of God is a doorway to answered supernatural outcomes. There is irresistible supernatural power in God's word. It will not return to him empty. When he promises, when he puts his word to, to, to pen and ink and says that this is what he will do, he never turns away from it. It never goes void. It never goes unanswered. It attains to what God intended it To do. It is a resistible supernatural power. It it doesn't return to him empty. The word of God is living, the Bible says. It is active. It is it is doing things. It's a doing word. It's constantly on the on, on, on at work on your behalf. It carries truth that sets people free. It liberates from bondages and false understandings. And when we engage in speaking the word of God, we should expect God to do outstanding, amazing things on my behalf. Sometimes we get into confusion. Our circumstances, our situations look bleak. They look, uh, 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 they look uh, like there's no way that this circumstance is going to get fixed, going to get you know, uh, set proper. But as soon as I begin to start to speak the word of God, hope arises in my spirit. I begin to start to see what God wants to achieve through my outcomes and I become bigger through it and God gets the glory because that's what he wants. Come on, church. God wants miracles in your hand. God wants to do amazing things, accomplish wondrous wonders through your life. 
but we need to lift our lives up to his word of God. We need to live the word of God, not just hear the word of God and not just read it. We need to engage our lives into it, speaking about it. You know, the word of God, we should be expecting the word of God to transform communities, transform families, transform lives. When we're speaking the word of God, when we're in that place. You know, when you speak the word of God, you are tapping into all of heaven's resources to come to your aid. Oh, I like that. I like that, man. When God wants to do something in our lives, he doesn't hold back a portion. He doesn't hold back a little bit. The whole of heaven's aid is coming your way. You're drawing it to you by your confession, by the word of God within your life. But you know what? We can do harm. We can do negativity to God's promises in our lives. We can stand there thinking, oh, well, maybe God, you'll do this. Maybe if God will do that, maybe God might. Maybe God, maybe. As soon as we get into maybe, the doubts start to set in. The enemy starts to work his, his work within our lives and doubt becomes an influence within us. See, the Bible says the Christians who have faith, who believe in the name of Jesus to do what God said he would do, have great reward in the planet. They accomplish great things for God. See, God's word will accomplish his desires and all of his purposes. He said he would do it. Come on, church. He said he would do it for you. It's not just some kind of fragment of our imagination. It's not some kind of just presence that, that wanders around the place. He's the personhood of God that is your aid, your benefactor, your, your, personal, your personal help in time of need. God is all we need to get through the circumstances of our lives. But we need to believe him. We need to hang on when it's looking bad, when it's not going to, not, not looking good. We need to hang on to God in difficult times. Not look to easy, simple solutions and ways out of our circumstances. See, the word of God has heaven-backed power. Yeah. Come on. The word of God says heaven stamps this as approved. Come on, church. You've done a course at study or something and you've gone to your university or whatever and they've stamped it, you know. University of downtown KL, stamped and approved. Clonk. And you walk around with it, stamped and approved. Well, in your heart, there's a stamp of heaven. There's a stamp of God. Approved. Come on, church. You're approved by God. Come on, we're not some kind of lowly, you know, down, out of, out of it. We are approved by God, stamped, marked by him, selected by God, special in the sight of God. And when we're like that, we can rise up with confidence to do the things that God call us to do. See, when you speak the word of God, you are tapping into limitless power. It's a power source. It's like going to that, you know, that power source right there and plugging it in and zap, man alive, you just come alive. You're powerful with the power of God. And whenever you speak to someone in the name of Jesus Christ about circumstances, about situations, that name has so much power, it causes demons to flee. It causes the enemy to run away. That's the type of power in the name of Jesus. That's why the enemy wants the church quiet. Don't speak about Jesus so, you know, uh, uh, so fluently. Don't speak about Jesus so aggressively, you know. Uh, uh, hide the name. Uh, keep it low. No. The power in the name of Jesus changes the world, changes circumstances when we speak the power of Jesus' name over circumstances and situations, it brings all of heaven's resource and aid to our benefit in the world. But we've got to know the power.